Hey y'all, it's Steven Van Camp and Lewis. And today I want to do a quick discussion about uh, some really some updates on some of the Catalea repots that I did uh, last year in, you know, summer or late, late spring of 2023. Uh, I've got some here and then I've actually got one at home. And then I also want to do a quick uh, discussion of the Catalea nobiliors that I deflasked. If you recall, I had a white one, or I have a white one that I selfed, and then I have a, a polyploid cerulea nobiliar that I selfed, and uh, I sent those pods to Troy Myers, who um, who distributes species. Uh, he'll he'll flask them for you, he'll send you a couple of flasks, and then he'll end up selling the rest of of the pod um, for actually a really good price. And so there's a lot of folks out there who've got these nobiliora seedlings and they're just right over here. So I'm gonna take a look at those real quick and, and do a quick update on those. And, and that's gonna to be today's discussion. Uh, I guess I could give you a quick preview of this Certipodium varescens, which is not really open. So I'll, I'll film that in a couple days. And also this oddly timed Catlay Tigrina. So, I'll probably film those in a couple days when they're both open nicely and then I'll post that uh, a week from now. But anyway, let's take a look at some of these Cattleyas and see how they're doing. All right, so this is Cattleya ludemanniana and this was one that I actually had some people say was gonna die on me because I chopped it so much uh, and I removed a bunch of the roots and I couldn't get them all off. So this is one that was growing over the side of the pot. It was in a pot that was probably about this size, but it had grown all the way over and was like water falling down the side. And you can see I left a very large chunk of that pot um, in this pot. And, uh, cause I didn't want to yank it entirely off, but I just remember that there were, there were a lot of comments not a lot, but a couple of comments like, oh, I killed the plant, way to go, uh, what have you done? And the plant's doing great. <laughs> um, you can see that it had some back bulbs that it, it reabsorbed, so these didn't rot. These, uh, the energy was pulled back into the plant during our absurdly hot summer in 2023. I suspect that I would have only lost one or two of these had the temperatures been normal. Uh, or at least near normal, and said they were crazy hot. So this was uh, uh, this is one of my favorite plants, actually. This is a beautiful Lou de Maniana. And I did repot it. In, uh, I did time the repotting so the new roots were just coming out. And um, it, it, did, it did fairly well. So it was, as you can see, it did lose some back bulbs. But the plant ended up doing just fine, although it didn't bloom this year. So, so it definitely did get set back, which, you know, that's pretty normal for a, a Cattleya. Um, ideally, it doesn't get set back. Ideally, you time it so that the roots come out right as you're repotting, and then it, it, doesn't, it doesn't skip a beat. Uh, this one definitely skipped a beat, but I suspect that was because of our crazy hot summer and not in combination with, with chopping up the roots. Um, so again, Catlea Ludemaniana doing just great. Sad that it's not blooming this year, but uh, I got to have my Ludemaniana fix with that rubra that I posted a few weeks ago. So this is a purpurata. This is a purpurata that I almost lost. So like two or three, or maybe three or four years ago, this plant, uh, this purpurata is one that I posted as a Cattleya success. Like, if you're going to grow Cattleyas, this is what you want to do. Two years later, the roots suddenly went downhill on me, and I, you know, this, this does happen, and um, it can get the best of us, uh, and I was pretty surprised by it. And so one of the reasons that I had said this is what you want your Cattleya purpurata look, to look like is these bulbs course back then those were super swollen and fat uh anyway i lost all the roots i still don't it's one of those ones where 
you know, you, you try to understand what happened and then learn from it, but this one just kind of surprised me. So anyway, uh, so a year or two ago, I repotted it. I showed everyone how I saved it, and, and I, uh, I made a video about it. And as you can see, it's doing well. Um, these old pseudobulbs have not swollen all the way back up, and the new growths uh, are a little smaller than I'd like. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's still in recovery phase. Like I said, for this Ludomaniana, last year's really hot summer impacted even the most heat-tolerant plants. But this one's doing nicely. As you can see, all these new roots are, are just going crazy in the pot. They look like a bunch of worms snooping around. And if you have wormophobia, uh, well, maybe big fat cattleya roots are not for you, but they are for me. And you can see that not only are these new roots coming out from these newer small growths, but the um, the old roots are also putting out uh, new new leads, I guess you could say. And, and this is a, a variety that's a carnea, so uh, it looks like we'll see at least a smaller bloom this year than normal, but I'll get to see some flowers probably in May or June is when this one typically blooms. Uh, this was another Purpurata repot. Um, uh, it is, this is from Olum Poly Orchids as well. This is uh, Takira by Aso do Crente. Sorry, all of you who speak Portuguese, I just butchered those words. Um, but this one is doing nicely. It's got some weirdly placed growths. So this one kind of snuck out from underneath, and this one I had to free it from its own roots, and it's still kind of crumpled up. So I'm not really sure why, why. I don't know why orchids do that, but I don't know. You know, these are organisms without a brain, so I can't really question their quote-unquote logic, but I, I think that one's still squished under there. But you can see the roots have come out, and it's it's doing nicely. Uh, I think, I don't remember, but I think I chopped this one up and sold the back half, the largest division that was still in the pot, to someone else, and then I kept this front lead. And um, it's, you know, it's doing okay. Uh, I can't wait till these newest bulbs are approaching this size, but of course, much larger. This is not a Cattleya, but this is that, <laughs> this is that poor Dendrobium speciosum that I fried in the cold by accident. Uh, it got much colder one evening than I thought it would, and um, it, it burned. You can see the section of the plant that it burned was here, but that section has a new growth right there. So I thought that section was just toast, but... Um, and then it's the back half that did less bad uh, has has a maturing new growth here with a, um, a sheath in there. So these things are bulletproof. I found out, actually, some Aussie friends looked at the, the type of of speciosum this was, and they said, oh, hey, Curvicali, the variety Curvicali, is actually from the warmest parts or very warm parts of Australia. So this variety is not that cold tolerant, and I didn't know that. So when I left it outside to see what its um, cold and sun tolerances were, I didn't realize that they grow kind of shady and very warm in their natural habitat. At least Curvicali does. Some of the other varieties that grow farther south in the uh, on the on in Australia um, are much more tolerant of incredibly bright sun and cold conditions. This one is not. I learned my lesson. It's bouncing back nicely, and I expect to get blooms on the next go round when when that's when it's in season. Finally, here in the greenhouse, I have those nobiliores that I promised, the seedlings. Um, and then I've got one more nobiliore in the grow tent, which is putting out buds, which I repotted last year, and I'll show you that here momentarily. But this is the nobiliore, this is the polyploid, 
you know, these were deflasked, I don't even know, maybe, maybe a year ago. Um, and so this is the polyploid, and that's looking really nice, um, this particular batch. And this is the other polyploid community pot, which is also looking really nice. So nobiliora grows incredibly slowly. Uh, so these, these are doing great. Uh, and this is the white one. This is the, so this is the cerulea. That first one they showed you is also cerulea. This is the alba. And I, I really need to redo these tags. I think I meant to have these as temporary placeholders until I got plastic tags. I have those now, so I need to get these in the pots before the pencil on the popsicle sticks completely fades off. But but they're doing nicely. So Nobilior, these are the Albas, and Nobilior does, like I said, everything very, very slowly. So when I pollinated these, when I self them, it took almost two years for those pods to mature and split. So that's that's just how, how I don't know, xeric they grow. They, they grow on sort of cactus time. They take forever, and, and that's just what they do. So uh, hopefully your seedlings look like this if you got those from Troy Myers. I know that he had a lot of flasks available, and a lot of folks who watch this channel were able to snap some up. Um, or hopefully yours look even bigger. I would love to see photos if you have them of your nobilior cerulea and albas that are, are growing along. You know, what's actually interesting is the compots have larger individuals than these, uh, these two pots. So these two pots had the largest babies in the flask and they have, they've done well. You can see the, the root system looks great. Uh, but they haven't grown as large as these other ones. So this is this is where the smaller plants went, and they grew larger. So, you know, there is something to growing these in a community pot uh, that maybe helps them along. Anyway, let's go check out the adult nobiliora that I repotted last year and check out its buds. And of course, as promised, the Cattleya nobiliora that I repotted this summer in fact, I am 99% sure that when I repotted it, I said this will not bloom in the coming spring. And yet, here we are with some buds that are probably a day or two away from, from splitting open. So Nobiliora is pretty tricky because it only blooms when it has an enormous root system. So the roots came out and you can see they came across the top and then dove down, and then there's more in the back. So this was a well-timed repot. Generally, when you repot nobiliore, and, and many of the other bifoliates, you know, you need to really nail that that timing, otherwise the plant is uh, is really set back. Uh, this one has surprised even me. Uh, I really didn't expect to see this one in bud or blooming for at least a year. I was kind of assuming it's two years because just because of how slowly Cattleya nobiliora does anything, really. I mean, I just talked to you about uh, a two-year seed pod maturation time, and then this one is, you know, six to nine months, probably closer to nine, nine months away from a, a fresh repot, and it's already blooming. So I, I don't know... I'm a little baffled, but in a good way, I guess. So there you have it. Those are the um, those are the the updates on the repots, the Cattleya repots. And as we're signing out, I'm going to leave you here with Kenny, who's got a couple of buds coming out, and I will show you blooms on that one. Also, some new roots, as you can see. And I'll show you blooms here on that one in a couple of weeks. Anyway, hope you all are having a great weekend. Bye.